Hello everyone and welcome back to her channel. It's Anthea here. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to her little corner of the internet. Please remember to like and subscribe to her channel so you get new videos once or twice every week. If you would like to become a patron, there is a link to her Patreon page down below. This will get you access to um, early, you know, early videos. Um, she posts them there every Monday versus every Friday. You get live Q&A sessions every Saturday at noon. But let's get on with today's topic. Uh, gore versus BDSM. Uh, she has often been asked, why do you identify as a Gorean Kajira uh, instead of a BDSM slave, even though you travel in both worlds? And the first thing that comes to her mind um, is the fact that in Gore, there is a clear sense of hierarchy. Um, and it's very comforting to know her place and know what is expected of her as a Gorean slave girl. In Gorean circles, uh, you have free people and you have slaves. That's it. There's no in between. And for someone like this girl, it's a great comfort to know where she stands in society. When this girl first entered the lifestyle, um, even within BDSM circles, she never felt that the philosophy of, well, you may be a dom, but you're not my dom, so I don't have to listen to you, applied to her. She always felt that she should be able to be available to serve and to be respectful to people who are free or who identify as dominant, even if she personally didn't belong to them or even didn't like them. The fact that they were a dominant and they, they were a free person um, in and of itself commanded respect. Now that doesn't mean that she did everything anyone ever said, but if it was something like referring to them with a honorific title of say sir or ma'am or master or mistress um, or fetching a drink or a plate of snacks, uh, she didn't see anything wrong with showing that respect or being of service in small ways. The other part is that this girl really likes and enjoys knowing that she's lower on the societal totem pole uh, than people who are free because she is not a free woman um, and she shouldn't pretend to be. Even when she's unowned, she is still a slave. It is just part of her makeup. Uh, she doesn't have that debate within herself of, well, if a slave isn't owned, are they still a slave? Because in Korean circles, a slave not in a collar is still a slave. They're just unowned. They are still expected to adhere to the protocols, the rules, um, and the mannerisms of what it means to be a slave in dealing with free people and dealing with other kajire. Um, and that, but in BDSM, um, the question of is an unowned slave still a slave, uh, that makes the rounds every once in a while and it's a very hotly debated topic. You have some people who say, you know, yes, even if you are unowned, you are still a slave because that's who you are. And then you have other people who say, you know, no, you cannot be a slave without a master or a mistress or an owner. And then you have other people who feel that they are, you know, slaves, um, but they get very confused within that whole, yes, you are, no, you aren't, yes, you can, no, you can't. So they've come up with the term, um, someone who has a slave heart. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your jam, roll with it. Um, but within Gurian circles, that's not a question that comes up because we already have our answer. Um, the other thing is that there are set and known expectations on both sides of the slash. Uh, there are certain universal rules and expectations in Gurian circles that are known and adhered to. Some examples are how a, how a slave dresses a free person. Um, 
that slaves are to be respectful and available to serve any and all free persons um, within, you know, limits set by their owner. Um, there are set positions for uh, anyone in, let's say, who goes to a Gurian gathering will be familiar with. Uh, there is a common language that is just understood. You know, if someone says, I am a Kajira or I am a Kajiris, um, then it's known what that means. Um, and within BDSM, there are no universal rules or positions or protocol expectations for people who identify as S-types. And it's really up to each individual or each individual relationship um, what those protocols and rules and expectations will be. Um, so for somebody like this girl, it's, it, it, it can be very confusing and conflicting. And now there are certain common courtesies within BDSM. You know, don't touch without permission. That includes people, toys. Don't interrupt a scene if someone's in the middle of playing. That's a big no-no. Don't do that. Another uh, difference between, say, gore and BDSM is that in Gorean circles, once you are collared or once you are claimed by an owner, you are considered that person's property. End stop, period, the end. In BDSM, being collared or being claimed by someone can have many, many different uh, definitions. Uh, for example, in our household, this girl is master's property because she is a Kajira. She is collared. She physically wears a collar. Master's submissive also wears a collar. It doesn't look like this. His is different. Um, but just because he has a collar doesn't make him master's property. There is a difference. He, he still gets veto power. He still gets limits. He still gets safe words. Um, the same thing with master slave. Um, master slave wears no mark of ownership. He has no tattoo. He has no brand. He has no um, scarification. He does not wear a collar or a bracelet or an anklet or a ring or anything. That doesn't make him any less master slave. But he's not her property either. He still gets limits. He still gets safe words. And so, um, and it works for them. And that's awesome. But there is still that, 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 that difference. And for this girl as property, um, she doesn't have her own limits. Um, she mentioned in a previous video that when she became master's property, she handed over her limits to master and took on master's limits. Um, so in that, in that sense, she doesn't have limits. Um, she also, even though technically, technically, she does still have a safe word because Master insists that she does, she never uses it. Um, she leaves it up to Master whether or not Master wants to continue uh, doing a session or, or applying um, a sensation, whether that be spanking or flogging or uh, biting, whatever, because this girl is property. She, she doesn't want the ability to, to be able to stop something because it's uncomfortable or because she doesn't like it. And so um, while there are probably many, many, many more differences between gore versus BDSM, 
for this girl, those are the main reasons, differences that really attract her to being a Kajira versus just a BDSM slave. So if you found this topic interesting, uh, again, like her video, please subscribe, and she will see you next week with a new topic. Bye.